So in this world of magical invention, where you have people like the Warforged who were constructed using magic, it of course is natural for us to introduce a character class that is all about magical invention, right. and that's the Artificer. So the Artificer uh, is actually the first character class that we will be adding to 5th edition officially since the release of the Player's Handbook. And the Artificer uh, will uh, arrive in this book uh, with various subclass options. People got to see earlier versions of the Artificer in Unearthed Arcana, and so the final version in the book incorporates their playtest feedback, our internal game development, and I think people are going to love uh, how it ended up. Uh, it was a lot of fun for us to develop, and I think even if a person decides they don't want to adventure in Eberron, they can take the Artificer and use it in other D&D worlds. You know, if they've, if they've always wanted to play the magical inventor, well, we've got a class for that. So how do you go about like, yeah, bringing Eberron back to 5th edition in this way? And to, like, are, are the adventures very specifically about recovering from the, the last war? Not necessarily. Right, right. There, there's material uh, throughout the book um, ways that the, the last war might have influenced your characters, ways that it might play a background in, uh, a, a play a part in the background of a, vill a villain in the adventure or the landscape in an adventure. Um, but often it is things like um, this town is trying to rebuild and being harried by monsters from Droam on the border or, uh, or there's a skirmish breaking out on the border again and you need to get through there or you need to help stop that skirmish and, and uh, settle things down. Like, it does have that very pulpy, like, th th it feels like there are levels of intrigue from like the, the very, the most dangerous alleyway on a street all the way up to another plane of existence. Yes. And I think that's what makes Ebron unique and kind of, an, you know, it has an intensity there. Like, all the way up the ladder, yeah. <laughs> there's intri intrigue yeah. to be found. Yeah, and the way that the Adventures chapter is organized um, largely around these, these powerful forces in the world, um, those powerful forces range from, here's a coalition of rich merchants whose primary goal is to get richer, not like anything in the real world, to... <laughs> 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 um, they're just misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> to, the, the Dreaming Dark working at a planar scale. Plus, you have also the simmering tension still among the nations that were fighting each other in the right. last war. Uh, I mean, you still have to deal with the fact that you, know, you, had, you had an entire nation that decided to uh, employ uh, armies of undead against the other nations. And the, many of those undead, even though many of them have been locked away since uh, the treaty was signed to end the war, many of them are still in use. And so if you're you know, wandering into uh, Karn and then it's like, oh, that guard is not living. Yeah. <laughs> that, there, there are plenty of adventures to be had. Uh, and while you're doing it, try not to fall off the airship you might be riding uh, and try not to get electrocuted if you're running around on the right. roof <laughs> of the lightning rail that you're you're, you're traveling around on. You also have a lot of seeds for adventures as well, for DMs to like grab onto, correct? Yes, well, because again, we have nearly 100 pages of this 320-page book. It's just devoted to seeds for the DM to build uh, adventures and campaigns uh, with, again, ready-made maps uh, for the DM to use, rules on, you know, traveling around in the Mornland, on the lightning rail, in airships, what happens when you go up against uh, the Emerald Claw, which is this, you know, one of the villain groups uh, in Eberron, uh, and, and many, many others. There are some things we explore in the Mornland. The Mornland, that is the name of that area destroyed in the magical catastrophe. Right. There are things we explore in this book, in that adventure creation chapter, uh, that no Eberron book has explored before. Uh, one of those is that there were some things that were built at the very end of the war that if it weren't for the Mornland, uh, the world very well might have been destroyed. And, and the greatest example of that 
uh, were the warforged colossi. And these, these were warforged that were uh, as tall as a tower in Sharn that thundered onto the battlefields of the last war. And the terror that they triggered was stopped short by the day of mourning.